Dear sisters and brothers, welcome to the live cast of this Mass for Thursday of week 17 in Ordinary Time, the 30th of July, 2020. Our entrance antiphon. God is in his holy place. God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that passed in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word that was addressed to Jeremiah by the Lord, Get up and make your way down to the potter's house. There I shall let you hear what I have to say. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at the wheel. And whenever the vessel he was making came out wrong, as happens with the clay handled by potters, he would start afresh and work into it another vessel, as potters do. Then this word of the Lord was addressed to me. House of Israel, cannot I do to you what this potter does? It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are mine. So you are in mine, house of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. My soul, give praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. Make music to my God while I live. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. Put no trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learnt from my Father. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, 
the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet cast into the sea that brings in the hole of all kinds. When it is full, the fishermen haul it ashore. Then sitting down, they collect the good ones in a basket and throw away those that are of no use. This is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will appear and separate the wicked from the just to throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. Have you understood all this? They said, yes. And he said to them, Well then, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left the district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, very often our Catholics and those who are non-Catholics visiting our churches have a very naive understanding of who are these who come to church. Most people think that those who attend church services, they are all holy, good people, courteous, polite, generous, and caring. If you have found such a church, most likely it will be the church in heaven, not the church on earth. Because if you attend our church services, definitely you will find some supposedly Catholics, selfish, inward-looking, rude, only want to reserve seats for their loved ones. And even if there's a space in a bench, on the bench, they will not allow you to come in. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, we have Catholics who will shout and scream at car park wardens. Now, of course, this is not to say some ministry members are equally rude and uh, selfish and harsh in their words, including, of course, some priests as well. And so, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, when people are hurt by fellow Catholics and by their priests, they become resentful and they leave the church and then declaring that everyone in the church is a hypocrite. My dear brothers and sisters, if you were to condemn those people who are imperfect, those who are sinners, then you have condemned yourself. Because if you are truly so perfect, then you should be forgiving. You should be able to tolerate. You should be able to ex make excuses for them. You should be able to accept the humiliation and the inconvenience. The fact that you cannot, it means to say you too are not perfect. Remember in the gospel, Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Referring to the perfection of compassion. Indeed, truly, my dear brothers and sisters, we must be careful that we do not um, make the church of Christ on earth as if it is a perfect, exclusive church only for those who are good, saintly, and holy. It would be very dangerous because then we fall into the same temptation of the world in creating a spiritual eugenics in the Christian community. That is to say, only those who are holy, super holy, those who are supermen and superwomen, those who have no imperfections in their life, no moral imperfections, then they, are, they deserve to be in church. Of course, my dear brothers and sisters, this is never the case. The church is truly a church of sinners, 
becoming a church of saints. All of us are pilgrims. None of us is perfect. If you are looking for a perfect church, only perhaps if there is anyone who is perfect, it will be you. Because all of us are not perfect. Even the bishop and the priest will not be there in church because all of us will be excluded. So, my dear brothers and sisters, it is very important today we read the Gospel of the Dragnet. We are told that all kinds of fishes will be caught. And it is true in the Catholic Church. That is why we call ourselves Catholic, which means universal. We have all kinds of people in our church. We have those who are spiritually uh, very deep in their spiritual life. We have those who are beginners. We have those who are who come from very poor background. There are those people who come from better background, so they are better behaved, they know how to conduct themselves. There are those who are poor, there are those who are rich, there are those who are very intellectual, who wants, you know, very lofty, homely. There are some who want simple words, Father, simple, simple, simple words, huh? simple. Uh, don't talk so high, we don't understand. Uh, so different people have different needs. Some are very devotional. They want to have all these kind of saints here and saints there, devotion to this, devotion to that. Or oh, some prefer the uh, extraordinary mass. Some want the uh, charismatic mass, uh, praise and worship. Some want contemplation. Some want meditation. All kinds of people in our church. And we have to be clear that different people have different needs. They have different preferences. And this is where being Catholic does not mean unity in uniformity. It's unity in diversity. Embracing all our differences, all our eccentricities, all our needs. Because the church is meant for everyone, including the sinners. In fact, if you were to study the early church, right from the start of the early church. We have Ananias and Sapphira. They sold their house, they sold their property, and then lied about the proceeds that was meant to be given to the community. They were struck down by God and they died. Then we have also the Hebrew-speaking uh, Jews, not treating the Greek-speaking uh, Jews uh, well, the Gentiles. So, again, we have differences. So, there will be shortcomings in any community, in any church, even in religious life, among priests, there will be shortcomings. This is the reality. This is the true church. Because as church, we are pilgrim church. Pilgrim means on the way, on the way. We have not yet arrived. We are on the way. And because we are on the way, that's why we need the church. The church is a place of refuge for us. Give us the ambience where we can grow in faith, where we are accepted and loved. Not because we are good and holy. If the church accepts you because you are good and holy, you don't need the church anymore. You can go straight to heaven. You can canonize yourself. But precisely in the church, even though we are sinners and the people accept us. Isn't it true that is what it means to be in a family? In a family, even though we are not so intelligent, we are not the best, our parents will still love us all the same. We can be ourselves at home. We don't have to put up a show, but we try our best to be nice to one another. It doesn't mean to say, therefore, we just behave as we like. But we are weak. And so in the Christian community, it is through prayers, through fellowship, study of scriptures, through worship, through the sacraments of the Eucharist, reconciliation, through all these means, we grow in grace. We grow in maturity. So, you know, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to have a more compassionate um, positive attitude towards imperfections in the church. You know, as a bishop, I receive so many complaints over small little things also people want to complain. We think, if, if, we, think we can put everything perfect. 
Uh, if you think the church is not doing well, as I said, not good enough for you, uh, please come forward. Uh, volunteer yourself. Make it a perfect church. Uh, everything is in good order. You, you come, you come, because we are short of manpower, really. Uh. We really need you. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all trying our best. Volunteers trying their best. Priests trying their best. And so it's very important for us that as church, we need to understand that this is where the Lord is changing us, molding us. And that is what today in the first reading, the prophet Jeremiah, we are told, God is the potter, we are the clay. Sometimes the potter makes a pot not up to his standard. He changed it. And God is always giving us opportunity to change our lives. So long as we don't give up on ourselves, God will never give up on us. The only real problem is when we give up on ourselves, when we think that we can not change, when we think we are incorrigible sinners. That is what the devil wants. Give up on yourself. You cannot change. You are a damn sinner. When we have that kind of attitude, then the grace of God will be difficult to penetrate into our hearts. So, so long as we recognize that we are sinners, we are imperfect like the rest, and we are trying to change, grace will be there. And God is patient. God is waiting for us. God will supply us the grace. He will give us, send us people to help us so that we never give up. Never, never give up. The problem with the Israelites during the time, Jeremiah, is they gave up. If you read further down the verses of today's uh, first reading, they gave up. They said they cannot change. And they didn't want to change. If that is the case, then there is nothing the Lord can do. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, it is important that to recognize that the church, truly, you know, they are sinners, they are saints, more saintly than others. Why? So that we can help each other to grow. Remember the parable of Daniel and the wheat? Those who are sickly will test those who are strong. So if you think you are very holy, then precisely the sinners test your holiness to see how virtuous you are, how patient, how forgiving, how kind. Uh, if you fail the test, means precisely you are not a saint. Otherwise, you would be canonized. So it is through all this interaction, the rich uh, and the poor, the poor helping the rich to give themselves, the poor helping the rich to come to enjoy a greater, deeper meaning in life, in service, in love. So different people in the church, we are strong. We are actually purifying each other in faith, in love. So don't think uh, that sometimes we have difficult people uh, in our offices, in our homes, in the community, we need to get rid of them. In fact, they are sent there eh? because God sent us these thorns eh? so that we become beautiful roses. So, my dear brothers and sisters, today, that is what the Lord tells us in the gospel. Um, in the gospel, Jesus makes it clear. He says, every scribe who becomes a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out from his storeroom things both new and old. So we must make use of everything that the Lord has provided us. And it's through all these things, good and bad, we perfect ourselves and we become more and more like Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you receive the wine we offer you. Root of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring for the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exhortation, May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
We may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I lift you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we offer each other a warm sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins, my unworthiness, and all my weaknesses and imperfections. Lord Jesus, I know you have allowed all this to happen in my life so that I could be purified and grow in maturity and in grace. And most of all, to be able to accept my brothers and sisters who too are imperfect like myself, struggling to grow in holiness. And yet, Lord Jesus, in spite of our unworthiness and sinfulness, you deign to come into our hearts. You make yourself present in the bread and wine. And although I cannot receive you sacramentally at the present time, I do desire to touch you and to receive you with my hands, with my tongue. But Lord Jesus, Again, in your kindness, in your mercy, I know you are coming to my heart spiritually. And so, Lord Jesus, enter into my heart and throne yourself in my heart so that I too will have a heart of compassion 
and forgiveness, especially to those who have sinned against me and the sins I myself have committed against others. Amen. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memory of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you, dear sisters and brothers, for joining us today. We hope you can join us again tomorrow, which is a holiday, but also at noon. Have a blessed day.